We'll just have another sticker board shout out. What have we got on so far? That's not a sticker. That's a, a, a nice postcard I got with one of my stickers from uh, Australia. Cafe. Where I first flew my drone. Me, Mr. Factotum. Matty's Workshop, Australia. I'm not going to tell you where all these are because I don't know. Natalie's Workshop, UK. Nell's Mechanical Man Cave, nothing. John's Workshop, watch John a lot. Great guy. They're all great guys, all of them. Engineers Workshop, USA. Great big shed he's got. Rusty Knox, he's on quite a lot. The Eddies, does all sorts of little gadgets and things. USA, Aaron, Aaron Engineering, Australia, he does live streams, does Aaron now, he's been doing a few, clever guy, got lovely machines, and obviously a large workshop, Kimber Zellick, and these are also Aaron's other sites, and that's Aaron. Does a lot of good talking and a lot of good uh, machining and stuff. Have a guy is just doing a come on, what's he doing? A quick change tool post, four sided one, big and huge bloody thing, as big as my lathe. George, Canada, not heard from George for a while, but the weather's probably bad there. Hope to hear from him soon, making something. I think he's got a little uh, steam engine thing he's going to do, not an engine, a foot, like a, go on, I forgot the name of them, one piston on a slide, Mark, Mark Presling sent over a lot of people to me the other day, and God, I can't believe it, I can't thank him enough, uh, over a hundred subscribers, new subscribers, all thanks to Mark, fantastic Mark, thank you. This is one of the lads I sent my uh, freebies out to. We've still got room on the board there, and then we've got room elsewhere in the garage. So sticker swaps, we need plenty of sticker swaps, guys. So any of you have got your own channel that watch my channel, please contact me and we'll do sticker swaps. I'll send you a few of mine out. You send me one or two of yours. What I did find out was that um, Aaron, what Aaron did, well, he sent me quite a few from other people, which were great. I think he sent me the Eddie's one and Kim Vazelic one. Um, it, it's great. So basically what I sussed out was, if you send me some stickers, don't send me just one. Send me a few and I'll send you a few, maybe let's say four, one for your board and three to send out. When you do any sticker swaps, you send with your stickers some of my stickers and likewise, I'll do that with yours. So you end up with plenty of stickers getting moved around. And it matters because people like to see the stickers. There's a lot of folk that don't and think it's a load of bleeding rubbish, but I don't think so. Many years ago, um, going back into early 80s, late 70s, I was a pretty big CB radio fan. Went on to take my radio am exams. Um, which I passed with distinctions, lovely. On a two metre band, not the big stuff. And uh, I, on sideband, early morning, uh, when the sun was coming up, we, you could bounce your signal off ionosphere. Um, I used to get like five or six bounces. And I got into Canada, I got into America, I got into Portugal. And I got loads of postcards off folk. And I sent mine out as well. And that was great. And I right enjoyed doing that. And this is a similar thing, isn't it, with stickers. Send all these stickers out to different people all over the world. It's, you know, an appreciation. And it's a nice thing. And we're all on YouTube. So this is a, a set of Bisley drawers that I bought. I think I gave a tenner for those. I'm going to try and explain to you how much I paid for each of these storage bins. So this is a little Bisley. 
that's just under my lathe. And then we sort of centre drills and spotting drills and various other things that I've got in there. There's some little dinky ones here. They're very little miniature ones. My little wedges for when I use my... These are homemade wedges for the Myford Super 7. Um, for when I want to put my um, ball turning device in. The wedges are a different shape and I made those. Next draw. Right, this is full of cutters. All sorts of stuff, but uh, it's full of cutters uh, and mandrills. I mean, I made all these mandrills here that I've made. These are all different ones with different threads on uh, to hold in the chuck of the lathe for various fixtures that I've done. They're all different threads for all different pieces of kit. You can't have enough of those. Or my little knurling device I made, which is just for rings, when I were knurling the edge of rings, the coin rings, and rest of it's just tools. Lots of various grooving tools and a little fancy one I've never used. Lots of these kit, all this kit at the back came with the Myford when I bought it. A lot of carbide braised, carbide tooling. Some good stuff. But I've never really used them and some unique stuff that somebody's made. I've showed those before anyway. Oh, I've been looking for that. That's my diamond. I'm for sharpening my uh, grinding wheels up. I wondered where that was. In here there's just the jaws for the different uh, three jaw chuck outside, insides, etc. The set in here, I think. Yeah, another set there. They're all for the... Uh, what do they call it? I always get name wrong. Pratt, Pratt Bernard. Yeah. Stones. Oh, yep, yeah, you still see them. Stones. These are all different stones. Um, some have been given, some have bought, but yeah, some of them are very, very, very fine. They're really for sharpening butcher's knives, are those. Yeah, little stones. And an empty drawer. So this is under the bench of the Myford lathe, which is on a, a top, which I made myself. This is like three... Uh, thick pieces of a strong exterior ply all bonded and screwed together to give strength plenty of support for your chuck uh, and all bits and bats of my food stuff so that's basically that's my little bit of storage there so we'll move on to I'll edit this so that you don't see me jumping about all over the place and that's basically the wall at the side of the lathe which I've got magnetic strips on which are only cheap ones from Lidl uh, some people don't approve of them because they're magnetic and they think they magnetise the tools and pick up metal I've not had that problem um, I've not had any problems really I think they're a great addition to have and they were dirt cheap I can't tell you how much but they were dirt cheap and my little diamond needle files uh, some homemade quick change tool holders uh, some purchased chuck keys for the different chucks and the key for the um, compound and some sort of little tweezers, scissors, dentist picks etc etc on that side there's a little bit of room where I keep my oils and my oil gun etc so this one is the big um, drawer that I bought 
a bit of a story behind this, but this is. I was going to say it's a metre long, it's not. It's bigger, it's 42 inches long. Is this. And it is, well, it must be nearly 900, ah, it is, because it's uh, underneath a 900 worktop. A uh, fantastic set of drawers. So, if any of you have ever been in engineering, um, you know that they won't have cheap clerks or whatever, machine mat, drawers and storage areas. Everything's top quality. These drawers actually lift off. I could actually lift those out. And they're on great big steel slides with sets of roller bearings on them. Absolutely superb. So in this top one shows you storage. I've got some uh, metric... Um, in fact, I'm sure I can see that. I'm pointing at. Yeah, these are metric uh, palan screws, I turn style, uh, imperial, tons of Whitworth stuff. Various bearings and things that I've been given for when I want to make anything, I might need a bearing. They're just what's been left over, some are motorcycle ones. Uh, and some Allen screws, M2, M3, M4, just cheap boxes from eBay, me Allen keys. Lot of my posts that I get from all over the world from guys sending stickers. This one, no, get that out. A big sheet of brass there, but aluminium, aluminium. This is a, a pack I bought of scrap off cuts of all sorts of gauge, different gauge of alloy sheet, um, some stainless. Stainless stock, alloy stock, brass stock, also phosphor bronze, um, stuff have been given which are parts of old printers and things, which are good pieces of stainless, great to have. If you can get it and do it for note, then do it. I probably bought that as a piece of stainless bar which I use for making rings. So that's basically my alloy and brass. Stainless. Next one. I've just got measuring equipment in here. It's a bit of a mess, really. It's not. It's not a tidy drawer. Uh, thread gauges, different types. Filler gauges. Dial indicator. Depth gauge. We fancy one for set finding um, for centering on the uh, lathe with the homemade quick change tool post grabber. Loads and loads of old masonry drills and things that were from my business, when I had my business. Uh, one to two, Warren Wrights. So you've seen all this before, but all sorts of stuff. Basically, it's just a drawer for measuring equipment, bar gauges, mics, mics, calipers. This one's full of nothing, just paint brushes, brushes generally. Really popular city up. Another drawer there, empty. Drills, taps, reamers. Let's see if we get, get low enough on that one away. Let's move camera down a bit. So, Dharma drills, Imperial drill set, depth gauge, lots and lots of different taps. You've seen all this kit, kit before, it's just my storage I'm showing you. Drills, all sorts of different drills, reamers, ones I've picked up at car booties, various drill bits. Some nice ones as well, really nice. All 50p items, really. All dirt cheap. Um, tap and dies. One of those cheap drill sets there with all the cheap drill bits in. Nothing expensive. Literally another empty drawer with probably not much in there. Move down a bit. As I say, it's, I haven't had this this long, but I am populated it because I haven't got the gear to 
This one's uh, mild steel. Again, just full of junk, really. Some steel stock. Yeah, bits of steel I've met, worked on. Scrap parts off golf. Old tap. A bit out of brass. Some railway sleeper bolts. They're big boys. A friend gave me. I actually used one of those for uh, making a, a press on me. Uh, on the press, and I think no, 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 no. empty, empty boxes. Yeah, lovely, lovely cabinet. All on roller bearings, very, very good quality. Go on, what would you pay for that? How much do you think that cost? I don't know. I'm gonna stick my neck out and let's say it was. 700 quid through engineering i don't know from kennedy or somebody like that 600 quid 500 don't know 55 pound 55 uk pounds for that i had to go pick it up from castleford a company called tools with a z for you and they must buy stock from uh, old engineering works uh, and what they do is they, uh, they just resell it. Uh, stuck that in the back of my van with a fork truck. When I got it home, I couldn't move the thing. Didn't realise how heavy it was. It had four casters on, one were missing, so it were on three. And it wouldn't have fit under here on the casters anyway. So what I did is I took each draw out in the back of my van. And believe me you, just one draw weighs a tonne very 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 heavy uh, and they were covered in grease and crap and all sorts so i just cleaned them all up best i could uh, roughly sprayed it and then painted all these red these drawers to match something else i'm going to show you in a minute so that is a clark's machine mark cupboard now they come with that cupboard, a worktop, which is really, really heavy duty, and a leg hole to sit under. So the whole thing's probably, well, let's have a look, what's this? This is, again, 42 inch long, a metre 10, 42 inch on. Yeah, it's nearly a metre, so nearly 1100 mil long. Uh, I didn't want the worktops and I didn't need the leg hole so what I did I took them all to pieces and I just used that now these drawers if you ever look at machine mark stuff it it's this these particular drawers they sell they're certainly not professional they're not very good at all you see that is absolutely full of pliers cutters strippers crimpers pointed nose side cutters main pliers brake pipe clamps scissors you name it they're in there tons and tons of stuff but you see these are on lovely sliding runners i had to fit all them myself because the the ones that were with it they, they just hook in they must come flat packed and they just fall apart absolutely fall apart um, in that one there it's a bit tight that one I've got all my screwdrivers wood chisels screwdrivers scrapers Phillips flat blade miniature ones little dingy torx ones all sorts of stuff in that one bit of electrical gear in mainly shrink wrap insulation tape some lamps and fuses and various bits and bats connectors and the bottom one is basically for hammers. If you can see that, have a metric club. Well, up. And that's just hammers, yeah, rubber hammer, lump hammer, axe, bolster chisels, sash knives, all sorts of stuff. Um, and my little disc on the and stick. And I suppose I might put this back too, which is my Thor copper hammer. 
Um, over there, we've got the TIG drawer, which is full of TIG stuff, spare batteries for the TIG welding mask, and all sorts of things, tungstens, different sizes, uh, and a lot of me other things that have been sent, keep all my spare stickers in there that I can send out to other people. Um, then there's a drawer, uh, sorry, a cupboard there. That's just basically got, um, what have I got in there? Battery grinder, jigsaw, all sorts of little bits and bats. Just generally electrical tools. So that's all on one wall as such and now I'm at the end of that wall. Yeah. I hope we've seen those. We've got a couple of shelves, one just general junk, cleaning materials. Uh, top one's got my dab radio, which is a must for me because I like my radio. Uh, a window with a blind on. And then we've got storage again. Little limb bins full of pens, markers, Stanley knives, nuts and bolts, different glues, all sorts of things like uh, Solval polish, uh, Araldite, nail files, all sorts of stuff. So that's about that wall really. Up there we've got ourselves um, my electrical test meters, rubber gloves, a pipe bender, thermograph, some more testers, uh, nuts and bolts, uh, they're mainly screws, self tappers and some electrical crimps and then we follow around on that wall uh, and we've got a shelf up there and that is just full of all sorts of different things like, let me zoom into that one, polishing cloths, sanders, buffers, Various things. I think that's an empty box. Spare tins. Some have got scrap copper in, bits of scrap from rings. Maybe baggings for my TIG welder. Uh, my lovely new mask that is the third one I've had. That one is really, really nice. It's a great one. Looks fantastic and it's got a replaceable battery. If you ever buy a TIG mask or a MIG mask, make sure you can change the battery on them. A lot of them are integral and when they go, they're soldered in, they're a nightmare. Okay, I'll knock off, set this up and come back in a second. So this one is under my um, bandsaw and my pillar drill if you can call it a pillar drill, I call it a pillar drill, it's a cheap one, no good, I need a nice one, an old Fopco or something or a Meddings, uh, just general junk in here, electrical stuff, bits of wire uh, and a lot of parts from the old Tazuki Jixa that I've got, like a jet kit because I put different filters on, special jet kit that come from America like a diner jet kit if you like but you can't buy a diner jet kit in this country that does the old jigsaw uh, for stage two uh, hacksaws files some squares and stuff generally junk but good junk that's just my spanners things that i use generally on cars etc That's Dremel stuff and GoPro battery Dremel, uh, 240 volt Dremel, and all the GoPro accessories. This one's quite full. This one is down. All socket sets. Some of these, I well, one of them belongs on my bike actually. That one I should keep on my bike. I took it out. Then she's. Miscellaneous down here. I've got all sorts of things like valve, um, valve extractors, spring compressors, bearing pullers, um, different oil um, wrenches, and all sorts of different straps for removing oil filters on the cars. Steel wool staplers, generally junk. 
that one were a freebie, I didn't pay anything for that. That was for nothing. Um, my lad worked for somebody that were closing down. They said, take what you want. We'll go and bust. And they did. So that's another show as you start it. We've got a couple of shelves, really, again, you could call it junk. There's all my tackle that I use for my milling machine. Cutters, chucks, different types of um, a fly cutter, uh, counter sinks, lots of different types of radius cutters, etc. And a must is a microwave to warm your coffee up. Some mag bases. This is all about storage, not about equipment, so but let's have a look. So this is another part to the Clark's uh, machine mark cupboards. Uh, this cupboard isn't actually that bad. Uh, I can't knock this like I could with the drawers. It, it's cheap and cheerful, but it's okay. Um, I mean, it's got a pair of shelves in there that you can mount anywhere you want, or you can take those out, and you can use all the keyhole slots to hang things, so it's quite good. And I've got in here, I've got things like my radius cutters, various tool holders and V-blocks and uh, there my slitting saws up there loads of uh, parallels at the back there some more parallels one two three blocks a little rotary table die holder it holds stuff um, what have we got here this one's a bit of a non spur this one it's got re really nothing in it it's just um, it's just full of bits and bats Things like what we got. So things like my tapping head that I've got, that fancy one that you saw me repair. If you've seen my videos. Don't use it much, but when I do, it is handy to have. Especially when it were running 30 quid. That one can zoom in a bit maybe on that that's just full of stuff from making for making rings um, that I haven't actually done a decent video on making rings and I need to because at one bit I got right into it making rings and uh, yeah they come out nice so in there there's all sorts of different types of ring making stuff which I did show I think in one of my videos so I won't go deep into that. Um, some colouring solutions for coins to make them look like they're antique. Uh, various other things, hole punches up there, Swedish wrap which if you've watched ring making on YouTube you'll know what Swedish wrap is. Punches, um, dollies, domers, all sorts of ring gauges and my homemade lovely piece of kit up there which I've got to show off about because these are very expensive to buy from America and that is to punch a ring, a hole in a ring uh, without damaging it and I saw one on a bit naughty and I copied it in my own head and made it and that's made out of a two inch coupling BSP stainless steel coupling that I bought from local pipe suppliers and two end caps and I drilled back no point in going into it I'll show you that in depth later so really that's just about all my storage well, maybe a little bit I haven't shown you this set of drawers here they're not your quality of your bisley that I think I got from Staples years ago and all they are really is um, storage for that's Clarkson quarter shank cutters, three eighths shank cutters, half inch and five eighths cutters, assorted HSS cutters, and then we've got carbide tooling four to six mil and eight mil, ten to twelve mil carbide, uh, and then British Standard Whitworth and BSF taps, and lots and lots of cutter inserts. They're only little drawers, I mean.
just about out of battery here. They're all inserts, lots and lots of different inserts for various tooling that I've got. Again, most of these were bought cheap, second hand. When they're not, they're brand new, but old stock. Didn't pay much for them. That set there and drawers, I think it was £15. I might have to change this battery out because I need to explain to you about these cupboards. So what we'll do is we'll just knock off for a minute. And we've got a few uh, little shelves up there. Just some little shelves I made out of MDF and some bits of old cupboard. Again, cost nothing. One star in my Deller in there. Some little drawers up there. I can't even remember what's in there. But that's the end of my storage because we come round to the exit door. Okay, you're back to the tools. My small little workshop and that's my storage. Show us your storage. I have done. Well done a, a little epilogue, shall we? So I need yeah, so um, storage. Show us your storage. You've seen it. Uh, and I've, I suppose I've got... A, Generally, I've, I've got quite a few shelves. The only cheap bits of MDF. I mean, some of these shelves I've made, these at this side and that one over there, they're made from, uh, you know, where your guttering fastens, or your PVC uh, guttering, just under your tiles, your soffit, I guess. That's what they are. I did Bev's house for her. Got some scaffolding, put all new gutters up, new fascias. There were the old cast iron um, metal hangers that were fastened onto the joists with um, wooden gutters that had absolutely rotted out. So I changed them all anyway, did them all. And these were all bits that were over. So they cost, let's say, nothing. I told you the Bisley cost me a tenner. Um, the steel cabinet at the side of me here were £55 from Tools For You. Probably the best buy I've ever made, absolutely. But look out though, there's always loads of engineering sales, you know. I suppose I'm going to give a bit away here, because I actually am registered with a few different um, auction houses and stuff comes up, engineering stuff, I mean... Some Colchester lathes have just gone, some student, well they're 2000s, and I think they were a 2500, there were Aris and M300, an M something or other, 400, I don't know. They fetched £600 each, they were for nothing. I can't believe it, the biggest job is moving the bloody things, isn't it? I mean if I had room I'd love one of them uh, Colchesters or a Aris lovely there. I ain't got room for it, ain't gonna happen, but I watch them. Uh, anyway, these were £55, a tenner, nothing for shelves, limbins, eBay, probably 20 quid, I don't know. The, the good one, uh, I suppose, is these drawers down here, these are the machine mark ones uh, from Clark's machine mark. Now I saw these on eBay, and I thought I'm going to keep an eye on them. And what I actually won, which were from a guy in Nelson up in Colm, heading towards Cumbria, if you know where that is. He had two sets of these uh, cupboard and dry units with the worktops, the Lego and all the appropriate gear. Two sets of those. And he had the cupboards on that wall there. Now, if you've ever looked at Clark's machine map to see how much these are, they're not cheap. They're not that good, but they're not that cheap either. Same as those cupboards. Again, they're not cheap. They are quite good, and I, I do like them. So, this guy was putting them on and he wanted to clear his garage because he was going to do something else in his garage. Uh, lovely guy, I went up here, gave me a hand to get him in the back of my van. So I got two lots of these with the worktops. Now my son, I gave him them for now, but my son's just started out. He's just bought his house around the corner uh, and he's got a lovely double garage with it. And he's, if you want to watch him, <coughs> he's called Big Rich. 
It might be Big Rich 690. And Big Rich, my son, oh yeah, he's bigger than me. <laughs> he's an, an electrician by trade. I trained him. He worked with me as an apprentice. Uh, and he's doing an old um, car up. What is it? Uh, a Felicia. Scored a Felicia fun. Go watch him. He's just started out with it. He's trying to learn to MIG weld. He's learning sheet metal bashing, which I've done all my life. He's struggling, but I'm letting him all go at it and see how he goes. I'll give him an hand at some point. So he wanted, he'd got this house, they just bought it. He'd had it just one year, actually. Yesterday, I think. Um, so double garage, right across the back wall. He wanted to build some benches and things. So I gave him both worktops that came with these, the Legos, and one of these sets of drawers. So now he's got a nice workshop across the back. I've digressed over and over again, which I do, you know I do, but some of you might like it. How much was that lot? 137 quid. I paid 137 pound for the lot. I had to go pick it up in my van from Nelson, but how cheap was that? So if you work out my storage, really, can not cost me that much, what, 300 quid? 137 plus my son's got all the other gear, 55, a tenner, nothing for the, for the shelves. Uh, yeah, under 300 quid and fully stocked up. And I've got tons of room in these yet and probably some more in the drawers. So I've got loads and loads and loads and loads of storage in a little dinky workshop. So again, if you're thinking of building a workshop, don't go out and buy everything new. You don't need to. Buy stuff second hand. Cheapest chips. There's always somebody wanting rid of something. Uh, on a rather sour note, I don't, do I call it sour? It's not sour. A friend of mine, in fact, this friend of mine, This guy is called, was called Randy Blackburn. Randolph Blackburn, if any of you know him. I know Keith Appleton knows him quite well. It was a YouTube channel. Um, and he passed away, uh, bless him. He was a couple of years older than me, but he had a COPD and a lot of problems. But Randy was a prolific model engineer. Uh, he built some fantastic engines. His best one that I loved most were about that big and it was a Black 5 steam engine. The little gauges worked. Everything in it worked. The little dinky steam cocks in it, little valves, little shuttles. It even had a micro whistle that he made that ran up something like 50,000 RPM, this little steam whistle. Lovely thing. But then he built from that, he went up and up, he built steam wagons, he built traction engines, I think they were quarter scale, he built two Ford and, no he didn't, he did three Ford and trucks with a friend of his, uh, they sold one and kept one each, which is they're still at his house I believe, they've still got that one or have they sold it, his mate's still got his, I've seen him recently. Anyway, as I say he passed away and he'd got a lovely little workshop. So they've asked me uh, and Miss Sonoff we'd like to go around and if there's anything we'd like. Now, my goddaughter, Emily, she's 20, 21. She followed her dad really avidly. She, wherever her dad was, she was. And they went to all the steam rallies and she used to fire up and steam up the truck and drive it around the place. Lovely. She wants to keep, I've got that Myford Super 7 and I know Randy had a Myford Super 7, the old model, the early one, uh, and it, it, she wants to keep that. I think they've got, well I, I sold the Beaver Miller machine for him and a, it, a Norton and another great big lathe, huge thing, and I think they've sold those, I believe, but there's tons and tons and tons of gear at his house. And they've asked me and my son if we go around, if there's anything we want, we can have it. They just want rid of it. I know there's a big vice that my lad wants, so he's, he's, we're going around tomorrow night 
uh, and as I say, it's sad because he's a bereaved friend and was taking his stuff. we take we'll put to good use and if there's loads of stuff I don't want we'll be doing freebies on YouTube and I'll do some giveaways so we can all share it you know with that I think I'll, I'll knock off okay thanks for watching